to prayers at Cliff College. My name is Ian White. I'm the senior tutor here at the college and here I am in the college chapel. Uh, in our prayers today we shall share the peace so we're going to be doing that with each other uh, in a few minutes. We're going to offer some prayers of thanksgiving. We're going to have a time to collectively confess our sins before God. We're going to listen to God's word, a particular portion of God's word, and we're going to offer some prayers of intercession on behalf of others. So please join in uh, whenever you're watching in the day and wherever you are in the world. So we start with the peace. One of the great words of the resurrection story is actually peace. And uh, here it is, that little clip that's taken out from Scripture, just on the resurrection day when all the disciples were wondering what was going on. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. So in times of personal fear, maybe, or collective concern, when the doors feel a bit locked and we're a bit trapped, we're concerned about what's happening outside, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, comes through walls and offers us peace. He breaks in to our distress and says some words of peace. So we're going to say and share that. So wherever you are, whenever you have joined this prayer, and whoever you are, let us share in resurrection peace on this day of prayer. The peace of the Lord be with you. And in case you don't know, the correct response is, and also with you, Ian. So, the peace of the Lord be with you. Yep, I just about heard you there. So from the peace, now a time of thanksgiving. We offer our prayers of thanks. So do get involved in this. I'll offer some prayers of thanks, and then maybe in the gaps between my sentences, you can offer a similar prayer into the gaps. Some of you might want to type into the chat uh, as you're hearing this prayer, any special thing you want to thank God for particularly today. Let's offer some prayers of thanks for the ordinary as well as the extraordinary. So let us pray. I thank you, Lord, for my shower this morning, my breakfast, my bee-filled garden, and busy bird table. My drive into work. My students, past and present. My friends here in the UK and around the world. My wonderful godchildren. My sisters and their families. My blessed and grace filled life. My hope in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Saviour. 
Amen. I wonder what you gave thanks for this morning. In the ordinaries of today, what maybe extraordinary thing did you thank God for? And after Thanksgiving, confession. A prayer of confession. To my words, Lord forgive us, if you could repeat, Lord forgive us. So let's just try that. Lord forgive us. Lord forgive us. So let us pray. If we have fallen into despair, Lord forgive us. Lord forgive us. If we have failed to hope in you, Lord forgive us. Lord forgive us. If we have been fearful of death, Lord forgive us. Lord forgive us. If we have forgotten the victory of Christ, Lord forgive us. Lord forgive us. May the living God raise us from despair, give us victories over sin, and set us free in Christ today. Amen. An ordinary day and an extraordinary thing. A favourite gospel story for me can be found in all four of the gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And of course, good biblical scholars know that it must be important if it appears in all four gospels, because not all stories do. They are in one or two or three, but there are only so many stories are in all four of the gospel accounts. The one I'm going to read now is often known as the feeding of the 5,000, though that's a bit wrong, actually, as a title. As one of the accounts correctly notes, that was just the number of the men that appeared in this story, not counting the women and children. So with the women and children, it's a much bigger crowd than 5,000. And I've gone for John's account in chapter 6 of the Gospel of the feeding. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Uh, Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. But remember, bigger than that as a number. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this indeed is the prophet who has come into the world. That's John 6, verses 1 to 14. And I read it from the New Revised Standard Version. Well, there's so much in this account, and in the equivalent accounts in the other Gospels, which vary a little bit in terms of t time scale and what goes before the story and what comes after it, but not much in the essence of what happens. So shall we focus on the rising reputation of Jesus that attracts such a huge crowd? Well, no, we're not going to do that on why Jesus wants to test his disciples, in this account anyway, not in maybe the other accounts, no. 
What about the significance of the boy, who isn't mentioned elsewhere? But no, we won't look at that this day. The relevance of the number of baskets. There were 12 baskets. Not really today. The miracles themselves. Let's have a look at the signs that are around Jesus, the importance of them. I want to reflect on something extraordinary breaking into the ordinariness of a day. What actually happened? A crowd coming to find out more, to hear more, to try and observe more. They'd heard a reputation about Jesus, the healer. They'd heard maybe the rabbi Jesus, the teacher. And now they were, they were coming to find out more. But these were ordinary people from the locality around the Galilee. Around the sea, there were fishermen. They were rural people, maybe just wanting to explore. What does this mean for me? A huge crowd was gathering. He got some kind of reputation. But what was going to happen today? And what was going to happen today on this particular day was different again. It was extraordinary. It was extraordinary. A crowd were fed, a crowd were fed, based on just a few crumbs, really, five loaves and two fish. They were fed as much as they wanted, it says. Not, not just a little crumb touching the tongue. As much as they wanted. And it says in the scripture here, they were fully satisfied. They were full up. Fully satisfied. And they became absolutely astonished at the abundance. How come we've got all of this left? It only started this small, and it ends up with all this that are the, the leftovers. They said to each other in the crowd, they murmured away, this is the one. This is the one. This is another sign that something is happening around this man. Who is this man? This is the one. The abundance of God, something extraordinary, breaking into the ordinary day that they were going to have. Imagine as they broke up later and they went back to their homes. Did you get that? Did you see what happened? What a picture that must have been. So what of us today on this ordinary day? Many of us sharing in these prayers right now believe in this miracle-working Jesus who is recorded in the Gospels. But is it possible that something extraordinary is going to happen today? Could we again be astonished at the abundance of God in our lives? Something miraculous happening around us. Do we need to be reminded, a bit like the crowd, to keep following Jesus today? And be ready for the extraordinary glimpses of God's activity in the ordinary bits of today's, today's day. Maybe we do. Maybe we need to keep our eyes open. What's going to happen today? Or in these days that we're living in? The extraordinary miracle of God's activity around our ordinary lives. Our prayers for others now will pick up that theme. Something extraordinary. And maybe in your thoughts and in your imaginations now, you want to think of someone or some issue where you want the extraordinary God to break into the ordinariness and the ordinary day of those that you pray for or you imagine. So let us pray. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayers. Lord, satisfy the hungry. Relieve the downtrodden. Support the old. Care for the confused. Befriend the lonely. Defend the weak. Help the hopeless. Guide the lost. Comfort the mourner. 
protect the refugee. Heal the sick and strengthen the church. Lord, especially be with, and maybe there is a name that you want to put there. For myself, especially be with members of my family, Tony, Ruth, and David. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. I hope you have a great day, whichever part of the day that you've joined these prayers. I hope you continue to look out for the extraordinary abundance of God in the ordinariness of what today is about. In the routine in the work that lies ahead of you, in the life that you're living. God is at work. God is always at work.